Jazeera's Mike Hanna joins us live now from Washington, D.C. Mike, so there seems to be a distinct change of tone uh, and a hardening of the language in how President Biden is dealing with the Israeli leader. What can we read into this, Mike? Well, very much so. Uh, for the first time since Israel began its war on Gaza, the United States is now beginning, it appears, to put its foot down. Uh, the language used, it is said, in the conversation between President Biden and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu included the words specific, concrete and measurable steps for Israel to take if it does not take so within hours or days, as the White House puts it, then the U.S. will be reconsidering its policy towards Israel. Now, what this is act exactly means, that's not clear. The White House will not be drawn on what policy changes are being contemplated. Uh, but the national security spokesman in the uh, White House, John Kirby, made very clear that this switch in attitude is directly connected to the killing of the seven food aid workers earlier this week. Uh, he says very specifically uh, that this is indeed the case. Now, there's a personal element here. President Biden is acquainted uh, with the owner of the World Central Kitchen, Jose Andres, and certainly this appears to have disturbed the president intensely, uh, including the fact as well that among those seven food aid workers killed is an American citizen. So now you've got the U.S., pushing into a totally different position in terms of persuading Israel to increase its protection of civilians. But more than that, President Biden, in his phone call, called for an immediate ceasefire uh, to allow for the uh, d delivery of humanitarian aid to those in Gaza. So this is a significant shift in the U.S. position, whether it transforms into policy changes whether it makes assistance to Israel conditional, well, that's something that the White House will not comment on at this stage. All right, uh, Mike Hanna, live for us there in Washington. Mike, thank you. Well, attacks by Israeli forces are continuing in the southern city of Rafah, despite the area earlier being declared a safe zone. The latest strike killed at least seven Palestinians, including three children. Funerals have been held for the victims west of the city. Rafah has become home to more than half of Gaza's population after many were forced there from the north. More than 33,000 Palestinians have now been killed by Israel since the war began, including 14,000 children. Enough. Put an end to this injustice. For 180 days, children have been bombed and there were daily killings. Enough. Where are the rights of children? Where are the rights of women? Where is UNICEF? These are the goals of Israel. It does not have any plans to end this war. Its targets are children and women. There is no safe place at all. What safety? There is no safety at all in Gaza. There is not one meter or inch of land that is safe. They displaced them to Rafa thinking it was safe, but even tents, houses, everywhere is being bombed. There is no safety. Al Jazeera's Hani Mahmoud has more now from Rafa in southern Gaza. It's been very consistent with what we have experienced so far since the beginning of this genocidal war. There is, in fact, no safe zone across the Gaza Strip, including the safe zones that are largely de designated by the Israeli military, where everyone was uh, ordered sharply to evacuate to, to avoid being bombed, but ended up being killed and bombed inside the areas that were uh, designated safe zone, including al Maas is safe area in the western part of the area of Balah and Khan Yunus and city of Rafah. But almost it, we, what we see in the pattern of Israeli response after every resolution uh, or action or demand by the United Nations and its uh, different agencies, including the International Court of Justice, is a more more resurge of the airstrikes uh, and air raids carried out relentlessly across the Gaza. So it will be interesting to see what is the Israeli response uh, to the demand by President Biden within, as Ellen uh, pointed out, within the coming uh, 24, 48, or maybe 72 uh, coming uh, hours. But so far, in overnight attacks, the Israeli military carried out relentless airstrikes targeting more residential homes, causing further civilian casualties. Seven people from one family, and we're seeing the same exact pattern of attacks on largely civilian populations, civilian defenseless population inside residential home with these unpredictable fallen bombs. Seven people reported killed and many other injuries and, and causing further internal displacement for people at the surrounding uh, area.